Hi, and welcome back to my channel. Thanks so much for joining me here today. Today, we're gonna to be talking about a couple things. I wanted to share with you some of the new things that I have gotten lately. And then I also wanted to talk to you about my no buy. I'm going to be doing a little bit of a no buy here that I have spoken about a little bit, but I wanted to go into a little bit more detail about that. So I did purchase some things at the very end of 2022 that I wanted to share with you. I was on a no buy for the majority of 2022 uh, for about nine months, and I did speak about that in greater detail. So if you're interested in that, I will link that above here if you want to watch the video where I talk about that. I didn't set a specific time goal for myself. I definitely wanted to get to my birthday, which is in July, so I definitely wanted to do half a year of a no buy, and then I just kept on rolling. And then when I had the opportunity to go to Japan, I knew I would be breaking my no buy, so I made it to nine months and then after that of course you know being in Japan and then there were all the Black Friday sales I wouldn't say I went completely off the rails but I did purchase some new things so I wanted to go ahead and let you know what I purchased and then we'll go ahead and talk about the no buy that I'm going to be embarking on here right now so since I'm talking about Japan I got a few requests to share things that I bought in Japan uh, you know, do a video about that. And most of the things that I purchased were actually clothing. Well, first of all, I bought a lot of gifts. I went crazy in the museum gift shops. The museum gift shops there were so tempting and I bought a ton of gifts for people. So, and I also just bought a lot of things just to have for future gifts, you know, for birthday presents, you know, meeting up with people and just having something to give to people and you know future you know birthday gifts those kinds of things so i purchased a lot of gifts and like i said the museums were just incredibly enticing in terms of their gift shops so that's where i did a lot of my spending and then i purchased clothing for myself you know not a whole lot but you know a couple sweaters and some pants and you know things like that so actually i decided to go ahead and wear one of them so i purchased this sweater which i love um I don't know if I'll be able to, you know, snap a whole, you know, full body shot of myself wearing the sweater, but I did purchase this boat neck striped sweater for myself. I did also get these earrings, which I love. I'll get in a little bit closer so that you can see them. So I bought these earrings, which I really love. And so yeah, I figured I would just wear a couple of the things in this video that I got in Japan. And I didn't buy any makeup while I was in Japan. I really wanted to get mascara, but you know, we really had quite a busy, itinerary and when we did have free time i just never was able to find mascara i don't know what it was oh actually you know what when i did find mascara it was always colored mascara they had a lot of you know blues and purples and greens but i was never able to find a black mascara for whatever reason so anyway i did not get any makeup while i was in japan but i did buy two Skincare items, you've heard me talk about these before. I got this brand called Kotoshina. They carried this at one of the hotels we were at in their spa. I absolutely fell in love with their face wash gel and their cleansing milk. You can purchase, I mentioned this in my best of 2022, you can purchase this and have it sent to you from their website. I have not yet tried their international shipping. It looks a little dicey, like I think you don't see how much you're gonna pay for shipping until after you purchase it. So I don't know, I you can see that I still have some of this product left, so I have yet to embark on that experiment so we'll see uh, i think i probably will be repurchasing it in the future so i will let you know how that international shipping goes on that end so those are new but i've already mentioned those so that's not anything too exciting for you guys if you've watched my previous videos many of the products that i purchased during the black friday I used quite a bit, and so I was able to know that they were going to be favorites of mine from 2022, so I'm not gonna be repeating, except for the Kotashina and one other product that I just kind of wanna give another shout out to. Most of those products I'm not going to talk about in this video because I just don't want it to be super repetitive, but things like the Merit lipsticks and the Tower 28 mascara, things like that, I did purchase during the Sephora sale, used them a lot, really fell in love with them, so I did put those in my 2022 best of video. 
So like I said, I'm not gonna talk about those in this video. The only product I'm going to give another shout out to is the Jordan Samuel Matinee Cream Cleanser. Really fell in love with this. I included this in my best of 2022 video. This was another one of those Black Friday purchases that I just really fell in love with. So I just wanted to include that in this video of new purchases that I have made since my no buy ended because I just really love it so much. And I love Jordan Samuel so much. And I know many of you use Jordan Samuel, you've heard of Jordan Samuel, but you know, he's just such a great presence and a, such a positive presence in the, you know, social media sphere. So I just wanted to give him another shout out because I really do love him. And I think he, you know, what he talks about in his philosophy when it comes to skincare is so, just tempered and reasonable and he's not into chasing skincare trends or having you know a whole slew of products unless of course that's what you love and it really works for you but he's just all about a simple skincare routine that works for you like i said not chasing trends not trying to force a routine that works for somebody else but doesn't work for you and just being really consistent with your skincare so Anyway, as you can tell, I really think Jordan is wonderful. If you don't follow him on Instagram or if you've never checked out his YouTube channel, I highly recommend. So anyway, that's why I definitely wanted to include him in this video because I love Jordan so much. So now we're gonna move on to the products that I procured at the end of 2022 that I have not mentioned yet in my best of roundups or in any favorite videos at the end of the year. Although this product that I got from Lil Fox, the Dewey Bean Dream, this is a product that I have mentioned quite a bit on my channel because it is a favorite product of mine. I think, I don't know, maybe this was in my best of 2021 video, but I did want to go ahead and show it to you all here on this video, not only because it's new, you know, it's a product that I decided to go ahead and purchase after my no buy, but I wanted to show it to you because they do have new packaging and this is what the new packaging looks like. It does look smaller than their old packaging and I'll try to find a picture of their old packaging just so that you can see for comparison's sake, but it is the same size and it is 1.7 ounces or 50 mils. And I love this serum so much. I use it at nighttime. It has moth bean extract in it, niacinamide, lactic acid, and glycolic acid. And I, you know, it kind of depends upon the formulation. Sometimes glycolic acid can be somewhat irritating to my skin, can be a little bit drying for me, but in this formulation, I have never had any kind of irritation or any kind of dryness, redness. I absolutely love the Dewy Bean Dream. This for me is definitely a staple. It is on the expensive side. This is, I believe, $125, so it is quite expensive. So that's why I decided to go ahead and pick this up. I believe, when did I get this? I got this from the Beauty Heroes sale. I don't know if they were doing a Black Friday sale. I can't remember what exactly it was, but I went ahead and bought it during their 20% off sale whenever it was during the end of the year. And you know, this actually lasts for a long time. I typically only use a pump, maybe two pumps max at nighttime. And I don't know, I feel like one of these bottles has lasted me definitely over eight months, maybe even a year. So it lasts a long, long time. So for me, I feel like it is a really good investment. I use it maybe twice a week at the most. And whenever I use it, I've said this many times whenever I talk about this product, whenever I use it, I wake up the next morning with just a really lovely, healthy glow. So I really love this product so much. And like I said, it's never been irritating to my skin. Of course, everybody's different. And you know, you might wanna use it with caution if you've never used a lactic acid or you know an AHA type of product before, but absolutely love it. Now we're gonna move on to products that were brand new to me. Having just been to Japan, I wanted to try a Japanese brand called Chidiorea. I don't know if I'm saying that correctly. I'll put it down below so that you can see how it's spelled. And this is their Japanese Imperial Rose Beauty Serum. And I just really fell in love with this bottle. They carry this at Beauty Habit. And they have a oil serum as well, which 
Looks really beautiful, but I do not need any oils. So I was really drawn to this serum. This has hydrosol of Hamanasu, which is an old rose from Japan, which does not have any pesticides. Uh, they specifically say that. I don't know if that's on the Beauty Habit website, but when I was on the Chidoria website this morning, that they say that specifically. So no pesticides are used on these roses for the Hamanasu rose from Japan. There's also fermented rice extract in here. There's rose damascena oil. There is a uh, Rishiri kombu extract, which is an algae extract. There's vegetable glycerin. And then they also mention that there's a brown sugar extract, which I believe contains glycolic acid. So I don't know if there's glycolic acid, which is derived from brown sugar, but how they describe it on the website is brown sugar extract, which contains glycolic acid. So I think there is some sort of glycolic acid in here, but this is so mild, so gentle. I actually didn't realize the glycolic acid component in here, and I would never ever have guessed there was glycolic acid in here because it is so gentle and mild, and I have not gotten any kind of irritation whatsoever from this beauty serum. I absolutely love it. It I've been using it actually day and night, mostly in the day actually. Like I said, I didn't realize there were any actives in here and I use sunscreen every day, so that has that's not a concern for me, but just be aware of that if you aren't somebody who uses sunscreen on the regular. But anyway, I have found it to be very, you know, nourishing, very hydrating, just very beautiful to use and I really love the scent of rose in here. I don't have anything else in my skincare routine aside from the three roses mist from Earthwise Beauty that has rose in it. So it's been really lovely to integrate rose more into my skincare routine. So huge rave for this product. I'm so, so glad that I got it. Moving on to another product that you can get at Beauty Habit, which I absolutely love shopping at Beauty Habit. I have been shopping there for probably more than 15 years. I love perusing all of their offerings. So when I saw this, this is the Holy Frog Moonbeam Retinol Serum. And so when I saw this, I decided to go ahead and add it to cart. This has 2.5 retinaldehyde in it. And retinaldehyde is also called retinal. If I remember correctly, retinal is different than retinol. Retinal or retinaldehyde is a little bit stronger than the HPR, the um, gran active retinoids or you know like the HPR which I've mentioned a lot on my channel the HPR is the hydroxy pinnacolone retinoid I think uh, you know don't hold me to that but I, I always just call it the HPR because that's so much easier to say so the retinaldehyde or retinal is just a little bit I think it's one step closer to retinoic acid. So you can get a little bit of irritation from the retinaldehyde in here is my understanding. So sort of similar to retinol, it can cause a little bit of irritation or dryness, but I have not had any issues with that in this formula. And I think it's because there's squalene in here. There's also phospholipids. I think there's oat bran extract in here as well. So it's a really gentle like gel oil emollient base. So I think because there's so many skin nourishing ingredients in this formula, that's going to help combat any irritation that you have. But I will say if you've never used any kind of a retinoid product, you might want to go easy on this. I will show you what it looks like so that you can see. It's just got a very thin, light texture. And just like I said, it's kind of got that oil, gel, creamy base to it that actually does feel very good on the skin. It has a really lovely slip to it. It feels really, really good on the skin. And it has just a very light floral scent that dissipates very, very quickly. And the reason why I really like this particular formula is because I, and I've spoken about this before, I tend to get melasma right above my upper lip. So I really like to apply my retinoid products very carefully along my upper lip. So I don't want a product that is going to drip or bleed onto my actual lip. So this product I can actually apply very, very carefully 
along my upper lip. And like I said, it doesn't drip or bleed onto my actual lips. So I don't get any irritation on my lips when I use this. I can apply it very carefully because it has that gel consistency, that thick gel consistency. It's very easy to control where you apply it. So I really, really appreciate that. But then it also feels very creamy, kind of luxurious when you apply it. It's just very easy to apply. It doesn't feel patchy or dry. It just smooths over the skin very easily. So I really enjoy using it. It has a similar consistency to the Drunk Elephant Retinol, or yeah, Retinol, 1% retinol, I don't know what they call it, if it's a cream or a lotion. I mentioned it last time in my empties. And with that Drunk Elephant product, I am not crazy about the new packaging that they have, that real bulky plastic pump packaging. I like this packaging so much better. It's in a glass jar or glass pump jar. So when it comes to recycling, obviously I can just take this component off and I can put that in the TerraCycling, which I'm gonna keep mentioning because I don't think many people are aware of. You can take this to Nordstrom's now. It's similar to TerraCycle where you can take things that you can't put in your curbside recycling and they will take it, they will recycle it for you at Nordstrom's now, which is great. And so anyway, I can take that component to the recycling there and then I can clean out this glass bottom part, you know, the, the jar, clean it out and put that in my, curbside recycling for glass. Much better packaging than the Drunk Elephant. So I think in the future, I would purchase the Holy Frog uh, retinoid gel instead of the Drunk Elephant. So anyway, really have been pleased with that product. And then another retinol serum that I have is from the Inky List. This has 1% retinol in it in addition to 0.5% Gran Active Retinoid. So that is just another name for the HPR. This one is kind of similar in consistency to the Holy Frog Moonbeam uh, Retinol Serum. This one feels just slightly thicker and maybe just a little bit more lotion-y, I would say, but they are very, very similar. Very similar in texture and feel, and yeah, just incredibly similar. Now, I will try to find the price difference just so that you know. Um, this Inky List product is a little bit higher in price than the other retinol serum that they have. This is the one that does not have dimethicone in it. The other one that I had, I believe is around, I don't know, maybe like $12 or so. I think this one is over $20. So there is a price difference between the Inky List Retinol Serums. As I've mentioned before, I've moved away from using dimethicone because I realized that it was causing me milia. So dimethicone is a deal breaker for me now moving forward, especially in terms of skincare, something that I'm gonna be putting all over my face. So if I am going to be picking a retinol serum from the Inky List, I would be picking this one that does not have dimethicone in it. And similar to the Holy Frog Serum, this Inky List Serum too is very easy to apply just directly on my upper lip. I don't get any bleeding onto my actual lip. So this one is also very easy to use in that way as well. It smooths over the skin very easily. So these two, I would say, are very comparable. It just kind of depends upon, you know, what you're looking for in terms of delivery system. This one is slightly more elegant. It does have a little bit of a scent, whereas the Inky List one is completely scent-free. There is also going to be that price difference. This one, of course, is not recyclable, but you can, you know, in terms of the TerraCycle thing that they do have going, and I don't know if it's actually called TerraCycle, but the recycling um, program that they have at Nordstrom's, you would be able to put this whole thing in the recycling there. But this is really nice that it is made out of glass if you prefer glass for your products. So anyway, these two though are both really great and I would say also very comparable in terms of efficacy. And then finally, in terms of skincare, I did get this Shantakai, what is this called? This is their Jasmine and Lily Healing Mask. This is a product that I have had for years now. I haven't had it for a while, but I think this is probably my third jar that I have had of this. 
I did get it for Christmas. I did ask for it as a gift from my husband and he gave it to me. This is a product that I really, really love. It smells amazing. It smells like jasmine. I don't know the exact jasmine in here. I think it might be grandiflorum or jasmine officinalis. And it's a very light kind of clean smelling jasmine. So the jasmine grandiflorum, if there is jasmine grandiflorum in here, it's not like that big sort of bold, uh, bodacious type of jasmine. It's just a very, I would say it's kind of a gentle, clean type of jasmine scent that does dissipate very quickly. Now they call this a mask, but you can also use this as an overnight cream and that's typically how I use it. I have this pulled up on the Chantecaille website. I just wanted to read off some of the highlighted ingredients in here. There's bisabolol in here, vitamin B. There's a lily bulb, which is apparently soothing and has moisturizing properties. There's saccharide isomerate, which acts like a water magnet, helping minimize dryness. There is sodium hyaluronate in here, so hyaluronic acid. So some of you may be avoiding that ingredient. For me, it's not really that big of a deal. There's macadamia oil in here, evening primrose, and like I said, there's jasmine in here, as well as narcissus and mimosa flower waxes. So, oh, and there's also some rose in here, which is going to help center, uplift, and help promote a sense of well being. So, this is just one of those uh, sort of like old school luxury type of products for me that I just really enjoy using. I feel like it does do a really nice job of moisturizing my skin. And I really love how my skin looks in the morning when I have used it at nighttime. So, it's just been really nice reintegrating this into my skincare routine. So, Chantecaille is one of those luxury brands that I think likes to position itself kind of in that, you know, quote unquote, clean beauty realm. Although, I don't know if they really call themselves a clean beauty brand, but on their website, you know, they let you know what it is free of. So anyway, you know, I have always been in that realm of really enjoying botanically driven products. Brands like Earthwise Beauty and Live Botanical really have my heart. That's where the bulk of my products are from, but I have never completely strayed away from conventional beauty. I have always given myself the freedom to purchase from conventional beauty brands, whether it be makeup, or some skincare here and there. So I am just really thrilled to have this Chantecaille mask back in my life, or, you know, they call it a mask, but I use it as an overnight moisturizer. I really love it and it makes me really happy to have it. And I'm thrilled that my husband decided to go ahead and give it to me for Christmas. So we are going to move into the makeup realm. I just am going to run through this really quickly. I don't think I'm going to be doing a ton of swatches or anything. So if anything in here piques your interest, do let me know because I would maybe do like a get ready with me or maybe a more uh, devoted video on some of this makeup, but I just wanted to let you know what I have gotten and I'm actually really excited about pretty much everything in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you a palette that I made with several different makeup items or several different eyeshadows in here. So this is the, the palette says Sydney Grace. I don't know if it's gonna get a little bit blown out by the light that I have on because it is a very dark and dreary day out here, raining in Portland. So I do have my ring light on, uh, but yeah, this is from Sydney Grace. This is what the palette looks like. I believe this is a 12, yeah, 12 pan palette. I'm gonna start by naming the ones from Sydney Grace. This is Pismo, and then this is Iced Mocha, and then this is Chocolate Bar, and then this one is Midnight Gold, and this is the one I have been using the most. This one is Gold Earth, and then this one is Defiance. I'll show you what they look like. So this is Defiance, and then this one is Gold Earth. So Defiance, and then Gold Earth, right here. And these are so creamy and so beautiful. And then this is Midnight Gold, and then we're gonna do chocolate bar. And so Midnight Gold right here, that is the one I have been using the most. So here we have Defiance, Gold Earth, Midnight Gold, and then chocolate bar. And they're just all super stunning. They are just incredibly smooth, really easy to apply, and they've been really fun to play with. And then let's go ahead and swatch these two mattes. So I have Pismo right here, and then Iced Mocha. So this one is Pismo and this one is Iced Mocha. 
And the mats are also incredibly creamy and really beautiful to use. But what's really interesting about them is they look pretty neutral in the pan. But when I actually apply them onto my lids, they do become a little bit cooler, which is really interesting. And then I'll just show you really quickly what is in this center right here, the smaller little squares. These are from a really, really old Laura Mercier palette. So I've been trying to clear some things out which I, kind of brings me to the topic of another video subject. I typically don't really watch decluttering videos. I don't really enjoy them and I've never ever done a declutter video, but I've kind of been thinking about doing one. So if you guys are interested in me doing a decluttering video, let me know. But I've started to do an initial decluttering of just really, really old palettes, which I don't really think would be super interesting for you guys, but Anyway, let me know. But anyway, I did get rid of a really old Laura Mercier palette, but I absolutely love these three colors, which I don't know if Laura Mercier carries these colors anymore individually, but this is bamboo right here. This is African violet and this is fresco. And I absolutely adore African violet and it just kind of killed me to let go of the palette. So I thought, you know what, let me see if I can depot those colors. And they did come out really, really easily. And so, yeah, I was really excited that I could just get rid or you know declutter the palette but actually salvage these three colors. So that made me really happy. And then what is along here, along that side, is actually these three colors from Glossier. So you know how Glossier has the, uh, they're not quads, I don't know what they're calling them because there's only three colors. So I don't know, is it like a triptych or something? I don't know what they're calling them, but they're basically their eyeshadows that they have come out with, with three colors that are all very similar as you can see, but they just have a different type of finish. And I decided to get almond, but I did not get the full component, you know, with the actual uh, compact and the whole mirror. I got the refill because I figured I could probably do my best to pop them out. And I just had my fingers crossed that it would fit in here and it has fit in here beautifully. So I decided to get almond and you can see there's just a satiny matte finish and then a very slight, slight shimmer. I don't know what they call it. And then there's the, like the topper. And that is what I have on my eyes today. And then what I have lining my eyes is, I think I used midnight gold. So I use midnight gold to line the eyes. So I have really been enjoying the Glossier Almond eyeshadows. I know there have been some mixed reviews, but for me and my purposes for wearing eyeshadow, I really, really like it. I think it is a beautiful color scheme. I feel like it's really easy to wear on the day to day. And then I love how they have that topper if you want to kind of give it a little bit of extra oomph for nighttime or for my purposes for filming a video. And as I was looking in the viewfinder, I realized it got a little bit darker in here. So I adjusted the camera. So hopefully you can get a little bit better sense of what the eyeshadow looks like. So anyway, I have really been enjoying that Glossier eyeshadow. I chose Almond. I don't know if I'll be getting any more of them in the future. I feel really, really happy with this palette that I created with the Sydney Grace eyeshadows and then just keeping the three Laura Mercier eyeshadows from that really old palette. And then right here, the Glossier Almond eyeshadows. And I highly recommend just getting the refills of the Glossier eyeshadow instead of the whole compact. If you do have something like this, if you have a palette sitting around then you and you think that you might have some room in it, I recommend doing that instead of getting the whole component. So that's just a little bit more sustainable and less waste out there. Moving on, I wanna show you this cute little palette that I got from Pat McGrath. This is the Midnight Voyage palette and it has six gorgeous eyeshadows in here. And I love how it has the purple tones, but yet it does read pretty warm. So I felt like it was really unique when I saw it on the Sephora website. So I decided to go ahead and get it. And I just absolutely love this eyeshadow palette. I've had a lot of fun playing with it. I've created some really pretty looks with it. So if you're interested in seeing this in action, definitely let me know, or maybe I'll just make sure that the next time I have it on when I am filming a video, I'll make sure that I 
I'd let you guys know that I'm using this. But anyway, I really love this. And it, like I said, if you guys are really curious about this little palette, definitely let me know and maybe I can do some swatches later. I just wanna make sure this video doesn't get too long because I've got a few more things to show you. Um, I did get two of the Lisa Eldridge palettes. I got Cinnabar, which is a really, really warm palette that I really like, but I don't know if I'm completely in love with it. I need to experiment with it a little bit more. I'm sure if you guys love Lisa Eldridge, you've already been <laughs> checking out videos across YouTube to see the reviews on these palettes, but I, I really like it. But again, I just don't know if I love it. Uh, so I need, like I said, I need to play with this one a little bit more. And then I also got Sorcery, which is absolutely stunning but it is definitely not a palette that I feel like I'm gonna be reaching for on the regular. And I did actually switch one of the colors out. So this color right here did not come with the palette. That color that I switched out is Faded Amethyst. So Faded Amethyst did not come with the palette. So the color that came with the palette is Swan Song, which is just this incredible shiny, I believe it's a duochrome color, but definitely not one that I am going to be reaching for. So I took out Swan Song and I put in the Faded Amethyst instead, which is definitely much more my speed. So in terms of these palettes, I have not been reaching for them all that often. I have not been reaching for Sorcery hardly at all. It's going to be one of those palettes where I actually have to make myself reach for it, which in hindsight, I probably should have done what I did during my nine month no buy. I should have just put it on my wish list. I wish I wouldn't have gotten in that frenzy of, you know, oh my gosh, Lisa Eldridge has this incredible launch out right now and I'm feeling like I really need to get it and is it gonna sell out and on and on and on. And you know, I, I wish I would have just said, calm down, it's gonna be okay. <laughs> Even if it does sell out, she'll restock and put it on your wish list and just wait for some reviews to come out. I didn't do that. I got, you know, all into the frenzy and got it on the day that they launched and I wish that I just would have chilled out. But I didn't do that and I purchased it and you know, I'm happy to have them, but you know, I just don't know how frequently I'm going to reach for sorcery. Now, I do need to play with it more. That is absolutely true. And it might turn out that when I do reach for it and I play with it, it's gonna make me really happy and, and I will end up really loving it. When it comes to Cinnabar, I am realizing that warmish tones, warmish eyeshadows do really complement my skin tone way more than I realized and that is why I got it because when I watched her review, somebody made the comment, uh, when I was reading the comments on her YouTube channel, someone made the comment about how on her olive tone skin, the cinnabar just really woke up her face and I have olive tone skin as well. Although she's uh, more pale than I am, but I do have olive tone skin and I thought, you know what? It absolutely did liven up her skin. So that's why I decided to do cinnabar because I wanted to play more with warm tones. So I just need to get a little bit more adventurous, I think. So I'm going to look at these palettes in that way, but I do think I probably could have put it on my wish list and just waited for a little bit longer, which, I will talk about uh, in a minute here in terms of my no buy. And then lastly, or not lastly, there's a couple of other things I wanna talk about. I did decide to go ahead and get some phytosurgeons. I had mentioned that this was on my wish list during my no buy and that I had kind of lost interest in it. Well, my interest was peaked again in phytosurgeons and I ended up getting four of these. I just couldn't decide which ones to get, so I got all four that I was interested in. And the ones that I got were evaporate, condensate, fume, and simmer. So let's talk about condensate first because that is what I have on the tops of my cheeks right now. I do have bronzer on. I believe I used the, yeah, I did use the Westman Atelier bronzer all over my face, but I do have condensate as a blush on the apples of my cheeks right now. And I'm moving the ring light away for this portion of the video while I'm showing you swatches because it's actually blowing out the color of this blush. Condensate is described as a cooler toned muted dusty pink 
with a hint of violet. So they call it a lavender oat latte. So I'm gonna go ahead and swatch this for you guys. And I'm gonna put this on my palm here. So you can see how cool toned it is. But what is absolutely wild is when I put this on my skin, it just warms up right away. So while it reads super cool in the pot, it warms up on my cheeks. So I don't know, I mean, maybe it's just me. I'm gonna put the light, the ring light back on me. Um, but in my mirror in the bathroom, when I'm putting this on, it just immediately warms up. And somebody who knows about color theory more so than I do with my olive tone skin, like what maybe the green in my skin, the olive in my skin combined with these purpley tones, I guess it kind of turns warm. So this was a huge surprise for me. I did not think that this was going to become one of my favorite colors from uh, Fido Surgeons, but it absolutely is. I think of the bunch, actually I have not put Simmer on now that I think about it, but this one I absolutely love. And you'll see here, and I'm gonna move the light away again, you'll see here the texture is really, really creamy and kind of on that dewy side, but not hyper dewy. And it's really easy to blend with your fingers. I think I actually prefer blending it with my fingers more so than a brush. So next up, let's talk about Evaporate. And they describe Evaporate as a neutral smoky peach. And they say to think about a brown sugar milk tea. And let's watch this one. And I feel like that up above condensate has kind of gotten more sheared out because I was playing with that one quite a bit. So actually, why don't I put some more condensate above there just so you guys can see a better comparison. So condensate on the top, evaporate on the bottom. And then I also got fume which is a dusty neutral rose. And let's watch that one here. And it's really interesting. It almost feels like fume is what condensate ends up looking like on my cheeks. And then lastly, I have Simmer. Simmer is described as a soft, slightly violet toned pink. And I have not used this one yet and I'm actually really excited too. So let's see. And you know, these are so soft and creamy. It's amazing. A lot of people describe them as having a moussey texture, which I would agree with. And you can see that beautiful sheen that it has. So, so pretty. Kind of tempted to just put a little bit of simmer on. Mm, so pretty. Yeah, I'm super excited to put simmer to the test. I think maybe, like I said, condensate and simmer seem like they might be my favorites of the bunch. And I don't know if you can use these on your lips or not, but I'm gonna try it. Put a little bit of simmer on my lips, which seems like it should work out and looks kind of pretty. So that's everything that I got at the end of 2022 that I wanted to share with you all. So just real quickly, let's just talk about my no buy. Since I did a pretty decent amount of purchasing, like I said, while I was in Japan, and then when I got home, taking advantage of some of these sales and some things I wanted to try skincare wise, makeup wise, I just felt like, you know, I need to kind of rein it in, get back into putting things on my wait list. So the Lisa Eldridge is kind of a case in point, probably should have just chilled out and just waited, put it on the, uh, put it on my wish list rather than just, like I said, getting in that purchasing frenzy. So I really just wanted to get back to that centered place, that grounded place where I don't get immediately charged up and feel like, oh my gosh, I have to buy that. I'm gonna miss out on that. 
you know, I, just that feeling, that intense feeling of the I wants, you know, I want that, I want that, I need it. Um, when I was in the real depths of my no buy, it felt so good to just know right away that, nope, I'm not getting it. I'm on a no buy. I can't get it. It just felt so good to know that I don't need it and that my happiness or that rush that you get from kind of the, you know, hunting something down or wanting the latest thing that that is very, very fleeting and does not bring you any true happiness or self-satisfaction or anything like that, that it is so short lived. So I just really felt like, and I feel like I want to get back to that place of, I, I don't know, the best word I can think of it is just kind of calm and centeredness and groundedness. So it's a relatively short no buy. It's just for three months. So January, February, and March. And it's just a no buy for skincare and makeup. But I wanna be really transparent and there is one product that I did purchase at the very beginning of this month of January, 2023 and that is the Ordinary Multi-Peptide Lash and Brow Serum. And this has been on my radar for a while. I wish I would have just purchased it during the Sephora sale, but for some reason I forgot about it. So the reason why I purchased it this month, even though I'm on my no buy, is I purchased it because I just don't want to wait to start using it. I wanted to get on it right away because I want to see if it works. And I just don't wanna wait until April to see if it works because then, I don't know, I'm just feeling like I just wanna see if it works so then I can relay that to you. And then obviously for my own personal benefit, I wanna actually see if this works. And I'm excited about it because it's one of those you know, lash serum, brow serums that does not have prostaglandins in it. It works because, or it supposedly works because of the peptides in it. So I just wanted to get on the jump with this serum and I will report and I'll use it for three months. So maybe what I'll do is when my no buy is over in April, I will report back after three months of use and let you guys know if I notice any big differences in it. I haven't been using it for that long. It's only been about a week or so. So I can't report, uh, any findings quite yet, but so far what I can say is it has not caused me any irritation, which is great. And then the other thing is it's very easy to apply. So I'll show you what the brush looks like. It's very thin and fine. And when I apply it just along my lash line at nighttime, it does not get into my eyes or cause any irritation. It seems like it just stays put along the lash line. So then when I apply it at nighttime, what I was really concerned about is that I, I like to read um, at nighttime before I go to sleep. So, um, you know, and I like to have everything done. I love, like to have all my skincare done, get into bed and read because it helps me fall asleep. And so then I just like to read, shut out the light and then go right to bed. I don't like to have to do anything else after I turn out the light when I'm reading. I set my book down at the nightstand, turn out the light and hopefully fall asleep. So I don't wanna have to then, you know, read and then get up and then apply this. So I was very glad that this doesn't cause any irritation or it didn't get in the way of me reading. So that's a huge bonus. So I will let you know that that is a positive of this lash serum. So I just wanted to let you know that I did make that purchase, but other than that, I will hopefully not be purchasing anything until April. And I do have a little bit of a wish list going and I'm gonna just give you the heads up on that. I do have the Therapy, T-H-E-R-A-P-I Ultra Radiance Cream. and. <laughs> I don't know when I put this on my wish list. It must have been a couple of weeks ago, and now I can't even remember where or who recommended that, so probably won't be getting that. I do have the Manasi mascara on my wish list, and I would like to include that in my I'm going to I plan on doing a Manasi review, so a dedicated video on Manasi. I would like to include that mascara though in my review. So I might be holding off on my Manasi review for a few months until I can actually get my hands on that mascara. Uh, I still have the Beauty Pie stuff on my wish list. I don't know, I kind of am wavering back and forth about Beauty Pie, so we'll see if I ever end up getting any of that. I am still really interested in the Mara cleanser. I think I probably will end up getting that in April. 
I do have the Victoria Beckham mink and bronze eyeliner on my wish list. I love the bronze eyeliner, so I have that on my wish list because I do think I will be needing to get a new one pretty soon. I have mink on here as well, so I must have been checking out their website and uh, probably the mink color piqued my interest. And then I also have the Jones Road balm, you know, their, I don't, whatever it is, their miracle balm. I have flushed on my wish list, and that's because I just watched a video. Let's see, it was Hannah Louise Poston. She did a big review of those balms, and I have had the Jones Road balm in the past, and I didn't love it, mostly because the scent was very weird, and I felt like I maybe got one that was bad or off, but I've heard other people talk about not liking the scent. So I don't know if the scent is just weird or what it is, but um, I'm willing to give it another try. The way she used it and the way she talked about it seems like a product that I would just really love. It kind of seems like it fits my style of makeup. So if you all have used the Jones Road Miracle Balm, particularly in Flushed, please do let me know. I'm very, very curious about your thoughts. What do you think about its performance? What do you think about the scent? I really do want to know, do you think it's a product that I should get when I finish with my no buy? Should I go ahead and get that in April? I really want to hear your thoughts. So that wraps it up for this video. Thank you all so much for watching. As always, I do appreciate you taking the time to watch my video. Video. And if you're subscribed, I so appreciate you. If you have not yet subscribed, please do so. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.